Good evening, welcome to the second session of racing here on day three of the 2023 World Versus Cycling Championships. And we're uh, straight back into action in the men's sprint age category 35 to 39. We're at the quarter final stage, best of three. This is match number one. And the rides on track here Matthew Meanwell of Great Britain and Michael Mulcahy of Ireland. So the rides progressed into these uh, quarterfinals directly from the uh, qualification time trial this morning. And just uh, 10 entrants for this age category of the men's sprint. So the top eight went into these quarterfinals. Matthew Meanwell, the rider in the black colours here. Already a gold medalist at these championships, taking the time trial gold in the 35-39 uh, age category. His opponent, Michael McKay of Ireland, in the white. Sitting in second wheel currently, starting to uh, pay closer attention to closing the gap now as we go into the final lap. But it's uh, meanwhile leading this round, the time trial champion of course, has got a great turn of pace and has uh, proven the undoing of Michael McKay because uh, in relatively easy fashion, the first heat goes to uh, Matthew Meanwell. So he goes one match to the good. Pressure now on Michael Mulcahy to uh, try and win match two to force it to a decider. Heat number two in these uh, men's sprint 35-39 quarterfinals will feature a rider from Norway, Sebastian Cardfjord. And his opponent from the United States of America is Jacob Kramer. Kramer first to arrive. Riders draw for the uh, starting positions on the start line here. The rider on the inside line is obliged to lead for the first half lap at walking pace or better, unless his opponent elects to go past him, which is a complete liberty to do. So Kramer on the inside, Cartfjord on the outside. This is heat two, match one in the men's sprint, 35-39 quarter final. So as they roll away from the start line, a reminder to all riders that you must exit the track at the completion of your ride in the back straight. That's using the pursuit gate in the back straight. That is the only point at which you will enter, oh, sorry, you do exit the track. <laughs> of course, you enter in the home straight. So a very measured start here. Commissary in the back straight, just uh, walking at uh, walking pace to make sure that they keep going for the first half lap. The uh, starter here in the home straight is keeping a very keen eye on things and has decided that they have not completed the requirement of executing that uh, first half lap at walking pace. So once this heat is reset, let me just remind you that uh, we've got a great range of World Masters merchandise available for you. Our merch table is uh, located at the foot of the spectator stairs in the Velodrome reception. T-shirts, polo shirts, uh, pens, uh, very nice water bottle as well, and souvenir sections of the former track here at the National Cycling Centre. We're on the third edition of the boards here at Manchester. So you can buy a piece of history 
from uh, days gone by with that uh, preceding uh, years wood are also available in uh, spectator sized chunks to purchase from our merch table as well. So they're off again and uh, speed should be a little higher this time. So Kramer in the pale blue and white in the lower position on the track. Sebastian Cartfield of Norway, his opponent, laying off by a couple of bike links. Having completed that first half lap at walking pace, uh, they can go just as slowly as they like beyond that point. Indeed, they can come to a complete standstill, but on no more than two occasions and for no more than 30 seconds per standstill. The purpose of a standstill is to try to enforce the rider in second place to take the lead. Advantageous being in second spot because you can uh, watch what your opponent's doing without having to look behind you. Sebastian Carfjord of Norway just uh, trying to throw Jacob Kramer off the scent here by weaving left and right behind him. Kramer continues to roll forwards. Riders ascending the banking on the track in the back straights. As Kramer reached the top, Cartfield dipped underneath. Still no the rider committing to the sprint just yet. The bell when they come to the home straight this time. So Kramer now in that second spot. Cartfield able to uh, control the angles at which he can uh, mount an attacking move. First rider inside that red sprinter's line. Will oblige your opponent to go around the outside. Neither is there yet. Now Cartfield dips inside the red. So. Uh, Kramer is chasing hard, but he's let too big a gap open here for the uh, Norwegian. And uh, Sebastian Kalfjord is going to take match number one in heat two. No pressure on Jacob Kramer next time round to uh, try and uh, square that one. Heat three is an all-Australian affair. Douglas Higginson taking on his fellow countryman, Ross Taylor. So riders draw for the starting position on the commencement of the ride. No high-tech iPad devices here to do the draw. We uh, rely on good old playing cards. Effective, and the battery never runs out. So, the draw of this one has been done. It's uh, meant that Douglas Higginson starts on the inside. Higginson in the all black. Taylor in the green with the yellow banding. An assimilation of the national colours of Australia. Speaking of Australia, our uh, lensman down there in the home straight, Larry Hickman from Velo UK, catching all the action so you can uh, follow the progress of the championships on the Velo UK website and social media feeds. Of course, you can see uh, full results of all the championships on our website at cyclingmasters.com. Higginson still on the front here. Eyes fixed on his opponent, Ross Taylor. Graphic illustration of the sprinter's art of riding forwards whilst looking backwards from uh, Douglas Higginson. Pace incrementing slightly. Positions though remain the same. 
you want that to go when they come around this time. Who's going to be the first to strike here? Costello raises himself out of the saddle, draws a little close to the back wheel of Higginson. Both riders inside that red line, Higginson though in the front, so uh, Taylor's got the longer way round. Higginson holding that line under the scoreboard, Ross Taylor comes off his shoulder but is not able to get on terms and across the line is Douglas Higginson who will take match number one in quarter-final heat three. So the fourth quarter-final heat will feature from Great Britain, James Brightwell. Bronze medalist in the uh, time trial a days ago. And uh, he was the bright silver medalist in the British National Masters Sprint this year, the uh, Newport Velodrome. And his opponent from Mexico is Roberto serrano Plowles. He took the silver medal in the time trial here on the first day of competition. So uh, this is the last of our first matches in the quarterfinals of the 35-39 sprint. Starting on the outside here is uh, Serrano, Mexico. And leading things away, James Brightwell in the all-black colours of Great Britain. Though moderate, the pace is judged to be sufficient for the first half lap. They drop down to uh, the bottom of the track before attempting the corners here. Which uh, more forward velocity required to uh, negotiate the bankings any higher. Right, well, maintaining the lower position on the track. A very careful eye on his uh, Mexican opponents. Pace lifting now, be one lap to go when they come to the home straight this time. Mexican using the slipstream or Brightwell to move level as they come out of corner one. It's, it's very, very close indeed as they go down the back straight, nothing between them. Still not together under the scoreboard. And uh, Mexican little wobble there. So Brightwell though held his line well under the scoreboard and into the finishing straight. And across the line goes James Brightwell just holding off the challenge of Roberto Serrano Ploles of Mexico. So we return to action in that 35-39 uh, sprint when we get to the uh, match two stage a little bit later this evening. But uh, we move on now to the next age category. This is the men's sprint 40 to 44. Again, we are at the uh, quarter-final stage, and again, it is best of three to progress further in the competition. Unlike the age category who have just been on the track, these riders, uh, 21 of them entered this competition, so they had to go through an eighth final stage, so they've had one extra ride to arrive at these quarterfinals. And lining up for quarterfinal heat one, match one, representing Japan is uh, Yutaka Saraya and his opponent from Hungary, Peter Muller. Saraya on the outside and Muller on the inside. Carter Soraya won the time trial in this age category. So he's got a good turn of speed. He 
Peter Muller was the bronze medal winner in the sprint at the World Masters in Los Angeles last year. So I am laying off a good few bike lines here. Muller moves the action further up the track. Japanese rider out of the saddle. Looking to try and use the height of the track to his advantage, but uh, Muller's got the angles covered. One lap to go. Peter Muller powers down the home straights, but here comes the time trial champion, Soraya of Japan. Draws level and then overtakes Muller with relative ease. Peter Muller has uh, conceded this one already. So Itaka Soraya with that greater pace overcomes Peter Muller and goes one match to the good. So Olympia are rethinking of tactics when they go to their second match, which of course Peter Muller will have to win in order to uh, force a decider. He knows he can't rely on uh, raw speed to overcome uh, the uh, Japanese opponent. And that was a good, uh, well-judged move from uh, Itaka Saraya to take that first match victory. Okay, on to heat number two, and we welcome onto the track representing Australia, Nathan Graves. And his opponent from Norway will be Sven Ove Andersen. Again, a reminder to all riders that you must exit the track in the back straight at the completion of your ride. Nathan Gray's first arrive on the start line. He's uh, drawn the outside position here. He was the uh, silver medal winner in the time trial. And his opponent, uh, Sven Ove Andersen of Norway. The uh, Norwegian colours of the Norwegian flag on his jersey. And indeed, the uh, cross of the Norwegian flag on the back of his jersey. So he's on the inside. And obligingly rolls away from the line at the front. A rather hypnotic rear disc wheel on his machine. And when he rode the uh, qualification time trial this morning, he had the same type of wheel at the front. It was uh, extremely hypnotic watching him go around the track, but uh, perhaps a little bit of an, uh, a ploy to put his opponents off, this, off the uh, scent, maybe. Or maybe he spilt a pot of paint whilst uh, setting up his disc wheels, who knows. Anyway, whatever, he is uh, the man at the front. His opponent, though, Nathan Graves, is keeping relatively close order. Just a bike length or so behind. Anderson starts to uh, lift the momentum. And Graves will have to respond, which he does. Coming out of corner two, Anderson just drifting up the track. It's uh, Graves with the greatest speed to come around the Norwegian. Come away from him towards the line, and Nathan Graves will take the first match in heat number two. E3 next to come to the track for Spain, it'll be Itmar Esteban and representing the Netherlands, Jasper van Ender. in the green and black who will start on the inside and the uh, Dutch rider in the pale orange interpretation of the Dutch national colours starts on the outside. A 
healthy shove gets Itamar Esteban away from the line. Jesper van den Ende drops in behind him. The familiar pattern of the opening lap. Order is still the same. And Abandoned Ender starts to move a little closer, so adopts a higher position on the track as well. Esteban Mo still with the advantage. Abandoned Ender begins his kick. And they go through the bell. And Esteban has to uh, hold off the attentions of Abandoned Ender, but uh, Challenge from the Netherlands rider has been snuffed out in the back straight. So Itamar Esteban is the rider who will take that match. So the winner, eventual winner of all of these quarter-final matches will progress into the uh, semi-final draw. One more heat, one more match to go before we uh, take a little break from sprinting to bring you some scratch race action. So the uh, fourth heat will feature from France, Arnaud Double, and his opponent from Argentina, Lucas Louis Peretti. Duble is the rider on the, uh, the inside here, and Lucas Louis Peretti on the outside. at the World Masters, particularly in the years they have uh, taken place here at the National Cycling Centre in Manchester. Lucas Louis Peretti. The, uh, man following him at a respectful distance at the moment. Dubai keeping a watching brief over his right shoulder. move around either the outside or the inside. Attempt to sit just behind his opponent. Made to go underneath and uh, went back to the higher portion of the track. At the bell, both riders begin the acceleration. Peretti draws level with Duble as they come out of corner one. Both riders inside the red line and uh, Duble, well, complaining that uh, Peretti took the line away from him.
So, just let me tell you the results of that uh, final match in Heat 4 is that uh, competitor number 185, Lucas Louis Peretti, has been relegated for not having held the line during the last 200 metres of the race. So, the winner of that one is Arnold Dublé. So Arnaud Dublé is the winner of heat number four. So, time for some scratch race action now. This is uh, the women's age category 55 plus. Seventeen riders taking the start in this women's 55 plus age category. Twenty laps of the track, five kilometers. As race gets underway. So in theory, the first three riders across the finish line will be uh, gold, silver and bronze. Of course, uh, it can change a little bit if riders gain laps during the course of the race, but uh, relatively short distance for this one. Shannon Bergmeier, already a medalist this week in both Team Pursuit and the Individual Pursuit. She was race number 68, second wheel at the moment, in the orange and black colours multiple Masters champion over the years. Carol Scott also in the field here, number 79 for Great Britain. She was a bronze medalist in the individual pursuit. One rider just gaining a small advantage. But, uh, not uh, committed to the move. Mainfield will gather her back in as they come in, into the home straight with 17 laps remaining. All back together. Janet Burkmar incidentally was the winner of the uh, scratch race at the British National Masters at the Newport Velodrome earlier this year. William Fluke on the front for the United States in the red and black. So everyone having a little look at the uh, front of the race, but uh, no one yet committing to a serious attempt to uh, distance the rest of the field. Five laps completed. Lindsay Clark is a British Masters champion in the scratch race in the 60 to 64 age category. Winner of both uh, Team Pursuit and Individual Pursuit medals in these Masters Championships already. So the line beginning to stretch out a little now. Deborah Cools in second spot for Australia. Four riders gain a small advantage. Two riders begin to lose ground at the rear of the race as well. 13 laps to go this time. Small advantage gains immediately uh, 
taken back by the main field. Sean Mulholland of Australia looks like uh, he's slightly struggling with the pace here, the one who's just been uh, distanced from the rear of the string. Three kilometres, 12 laps to go. The pace has slackened, so Mulholland will get back on, but uh, next time the uh, hammer is put down, she may well find herself once again off the back of the line. So in a relatively short race like this one, any attacking move, you really do need to make it count. If you two attack, go clear and then get caught back. Chances are you uh, won't be in contention for the final sprint if it all stays together. Ten to go, two and a half kilometres. Nine to go. Once again, a little more pace being applied, but are in second wheel here, just uh, behind May Britt Valland of Norway. Once again, the pack is shuffled at the front. Two kilometres remaining. Seven to go, still all together. As you may have discerned from the 55 plus age categorization, there are numerous age categories combined in this race. So although the position one, two, three across the line, there will be a separate medal salary for each of the three age categories involved. So there will be a gold medal winner in each. Just to make things a little more challenging slash interesting. As the laps tick away, one and a half kilometres to go. Still all together. So as you get closer and closer to the finish, the one place you do not want to be here is at the back. to go. Lots of looking around now, that's uh, Beverly Anderson, bronze medalist in individual pursuit from Australia on the front. Once again Mulholland of Australia, looks like she might be being gapped at the back as the pace has increased again. Three to go, 750 metres. So those riders who find themselves boxed in towards the back of the main field now, trying to extricate themselves in readiness for what is inevitably going to be a sizable sprint for the line here. Two to go. Moving through the middle there, that's uh, Julie, Bar uh, Julie Barnett of Australia in the green. Out for riders trying to make a move over the top board, a big crash in the middle, that was almost inevitable. Over a lap to go. Well, the field thinned out considerably. And on the line, it's going to be Jenna Bergmeier who will take that one from uh, Debbie Capel in second place. As I suggested in the uh, last couple of laps, nervous moments and uh, 
just takes a moment's of attention, touch a wheel, trying to move out of uh, the line and get past. And uh, the result, as you saw, graphically illustrated. So we hope all the riders involved are OK. And we'll uh, confirm the result for you very shortly. So the necessity for some track repairs following that incident in the back straight caused a slight delay in the uh, continuation of our racing programme. We'll be returning to action in the men's sprint 35-39 quarterfinals race two very shortly. Well, the order across the line displayed on the board for you. Janet Burkmeyer from Debbie Capel from uh, Julie Barnett. That was the one, two, three. But of course, uh, the riders will be split by age category. 55, 59, 60, 64, and 65, 69 for the awarding of the medals later in three separate medal ceremonies.
So track repairs just being completed in the back straight. So we're back racing in just a few moments' time. So after some uh, careful sifting of the uh, age categories, you can see the breakdown on the scoreboard. Now the results of that uh, scratch race, the age category of the riders involved confirmed. So uh, Janet Boatmeyer and Debbie Cable, first and second in the 55-59 uh, age category. And uh, Julie Barnett, first in the 60-64s, ahead of uh, Lindsay Clark and Lillian Fluke. And the bronze medalist in the 55-59s is Carol Scott. So the good news is the track repairs are complete and we can resume our racing programme with the men's 35-39 sprint quarterfinals, Heat 1, Match 2. Matthew Meanwell and Michael Mulcahy, the riders involved in this one.
So uh, the call please for the sprinters required for the next competition on track. Matthew Meanwell and Michael Mulcahy. So of course Sebastian Carfjord and Jacob Kramer. Nicholas Higginson, Ross Taylor, James Brightwell and Roberto Serrano Powell. So all those riders please report to the home straight. So this is an urgent call for number 139, Michael McKay of Ireland. Your presence required immediately in the home straight, please. Well, we understand that uh, Michael Morkay has withdrawn from the competition, so all Matthew Meanwell has to do is present his bike on the line to indicate he was ready to start, and he will progress into the semi-finals. That task completed. So we move on to Heat 2, Sebastian Kahnfjord of Norway and Jacob Kramer of the United States. So Sebastian Caulfield, the winner of the opening match, leads away in match number two. Jacob Prema has to win this one to uh, force a decider, otherwise it is uh, progress into the semi-finals for Sebastian Caulfield. First half lap completed. Can't feel trying to persuade Kramer to 
going to the front. He's uh, slowing proceedings down as much as he dare without coming to a complete standstill. Kramer is not accepting that opportunity then, so he continues to uh, roll along in second spot. It's easier to observe his opponent. Now he has a little look underneath and decides, OK, now I'm going to go to the front. Two laps to go. So Jacob Kramer, what tactics can he bring to bear here to try and uh, secure a victory and take it to a third and deciding encounter? Beginning to pick up pace now. Can't fjord using the height of the track here in the home straight. He'll sweep down, try and hit the wheel. Not literally, of course, hit the back wheel of uh, uh, Jacob Kramer, and he is. Uh, Come around the outside, and once again, Cartfield's greater pace will prove the undoing of Jacob Kramer. So, in two straight rides, Sebastian Cartfield of Norway defeats Jacob Kramer of the United States. Heat 3, match 2, Douglas Higginson of Australia versus Ross Taylor of Australia. Douglas Higginson was the winner of the first match. Just securing his feet into the pedals at the side of the track. Meanwhile, his opponent already on the line and ready to go. And that's Ross Taylor in the green with the yellow bands. Knows he has to win this one. Douglas Higginson, who hopes to deny Ross Taylor that opportunity. Starter checks, both riders are ready, and the whistle will get them underway. So Ross Taylor leads this one away from the line. Similarly to the uh, preceding heat, Ross Taylor was outdone by the greater pace of Douglas Higginson in the first match. So he had a little bit of a rethink in the break to uh, try to come up with a different tactic. He's trying to persuade Higginson to come to the front by uh, slowing it down, but uh, Higginson's not for doing that. So both riders drop down into the well of the track. Taylor trying to uh, keep Higginson in the box here. Trying to keep him as high on the track, denying him the opportunity to sweep underneath. So the situation remains the same with uh, Taylor ahead of uh, Higginson. One lap to go. And they uh, come into the home straight this time. And now Higginson decides that gap is the one I'm going to go for. Taylor unable to defend it, and Higginson beginning to ride away. Well, it looks like uh, Ross Taylor may well have fallen into the same trap this time. He allowed the uh, gap for Douglas Higginson to uh, drop down in underneath him. And Higginson, once again, his pace proving too much. And Ross Taylor concedes before the line is reached. So in two straight rides, Douglas Higginson progresses into the semi-finals. Heat four, the final heat in this 35-39 uh, quarterfinals. And match number two here, James Brightwell of Great Britain taking on Roberto serrano Poles of Mexico. Brightwell was the winner of the first match. 
Charles first to arrive on the line though. Mexican here, assisted by uh, Matt Rotherham. Himself a formidable sprinter. So now that uh, offered some useful advice to uh, Roberto Serrano Pearls here. Rolling away from the start line. So Brightwell, second wheel here. Silver medalist in the British National Masters in the sprint and bronze medalist here in these uh, World Masters already at the time trial phase. So what can Roberto Serrano Pearls do to deny James Brightwell an easier ride into the semi-finals? Both riders up and down the track here. Wells in the lower position. Brightwell trying to use the height of the banking to swoop down. Wells still attentively looking behind him at the bell. And it's still Wells here. Brightwell's going to use the slipstream of his opponent down the back straight. Brightwell of Great Britain starting to move around the outside of his Mexican opponent. Wells inside that sprinter's line, so Brightwell's going to go the long way round and will do it. Very close on the line, but by half a wheel or so, James Brightwell will take his second victory. And he too will progress into the semi-final stage of the men's 35-39 sprint. A sporting handshake between the two combatants marks the end of that one. And we'll move on to race two in our 40 to 44 age category. Heat one of this one will feature Yutaka Saraya of Japan and Peter Muller of Hungary. It was Saraya who was the winner of the first encounter. In fact, uh, Muller conceded just on the exit of corner three. So once again, the uh, rider who has to try and win this one was the slower of the two in the first encounter. Itaka Saraya, winner of course of the time trial gold, comes to the line. He's on the inside this time. In the second match they reverse the drawn positions from the first match and then if it goes for decided they draw again to see who starts on the inside. Soraya leading this one away, the Japanese rider in front, with uh, Muller following him. And tracking along behind the Japanese opponent just as close as he can. He knows that if uh, Soraya begins the acceleration, he uh, cannot afford to have a gap to close. lap ticked off, situation the same, Soraya ahead of Muller. Soraya has a quick look behind and then raises himself out the saddle, begins the acceleration, he's got the sprinter's line as well, so Muller not only has to contend with the pace of the Japanese opponent but also he's got the long way to go round, Soraya still with the lead as they come towards corner three. Muller once again finds himself with too big a gap to close. So in two straight rides, Yutaka Soraya of Japan will progress into the semi-finals. Peter Muller will exit the sprint at this juncture. On to uh, match two, heat two. Nathan Graves of Australia, the winner of the first match. And Swain Ove Anderson of Norway, two riders involved here.
So this time Nathan Graves on the inside in the uh, dark red and grey colours. His opponent uh, Svein Ove Andersen, the red and blue of Norway. So Nathan Graves decides to uh, take this match a little higher up the track. Looking over each shoulder, trying to uh, preempt any attacking move from his uh, Norwegian opponent. But he didn't quite preempt that one because uh, Anderson dived underneath and has gained the lead position with one lap to go when they come to the line this time. Nice Anderson saw his opportunity and has taken it fully committed here now to the sprint. He's inside the direct sprinter's line, so Nathan Graves has got the longer way round. Anderson just uh, deviating out of that line as he came off corner two. Uh, but uh, the pace once again of Nathan Graves of Australia proving too much for Svein Ove Anderson. And in two straight rides, Nathan Graves of Australia will progress into the men's 40 to 44 sprint semi finals. Riders coming to the track now for Heat 3, Match 2. Representing Spain, Itmar Esteban, the winner of Match 1. And Jasper van den Ender from the Netherlands is his opponent. Van den Ender is the rider on the inside for this one. So the uh, rider from the Netherlands, home of some great sprinters, of course. He's weaving his way slowly to the top of the banking, drawing Esteban up there with him. Slowing things down, trying to uh, force Esteban to take the lead. Not quite come to a standstill, but not far off. We're only allowed to uh, stand still twice and for no more than 30 seconds duration. But, uh, they've rolled away once again. Brandon Ender decided that tactic wasn't going to prove fruitful, so instead continues at a greater speed. Esteban of Spain, still several bike lengths behind his Dutch opponent. Brandon Ender starts to uh, pick the pace up here. One lap to go this time. Jasper van den Ender of the Netherlands inside the Red Sprinters line. Here comes Itmar Esteban of Spain around the outside, once again proving that his greater pace will be the undoing of Jasper van den Ender. Same result as the first match. It is victory for Itmar Esteban of Spain, and he too, without the necessity of a decider, goes through into the semi finals. Fourth and final heat in this age category 40 to 44. Honor Duble and Lucas Louis Peretti. And as is clearly shown on the scoreboard, as uh, you saw during the course of that uh, first encounter, Lucas Louis Peretti was relegated. He crossed the line first, but uh, 
is adjudged to have impeded his opponent in the back straight. So on a double was awarded the win and so goes into this one, just needing another win to go into the semi-finals. Baretti will have to uh, try and hit back and also conscious of the fact another warning or relegation and it'll be the end of his sprint championship. So Baretti on the inside, Double on the outside. over his right shoulder here. Looming large is on a double of France. Pretty trying to keep him up the track. Trying to uh, narrow the angle of attack if he uh, elected to drop underneath. Successful tactic thus far. Double looking to try and come around the outside of the Argentine opponent. Now he tries to go underneath the uh, Gap was there, but uh, now it isn't, and that's the second time that uh, Peretti has uh, impeded the progress. And uh, he's only in spectacular style this time. I don't think there's going to be too much decision required for that one. So, as you would imagine, the uh, decision of the commissaires is that uh, rider 185, Lucas Louis Peretti of Argentina, is disqualified. It is a D6 for entering the sprinter's lane when the opponent was already there. So, on a double, hopefully is able to continue, is uh, the uh, winner of Heat 4. So after that dramatic conclusion to the 40 to 44 sprint quarter finals, we uh, will move our racing program on to our next scratch race. It's a women's scratch race, age country 45 to 54. Again, contested over five kilometers or 20 laps of the track.
So 15 riders line up for this uh, mixed age category cat strike race. So this featuring uh, the age categories 45, 49 and 50 to 54. Again, there will be two separate medal ceremonies for the appropriate age category, but uh, combined together in one race. So we're ready to roll in this women's scratch race, so it's category 45 to 54. They'll have a rolling lap, so the whistle will get them underway, and that when they come round at the completion of that lap, hopefully without taking the coaches with them. Well, moments in attention from one of the uh, riders' helpers there, to step out of the way. So uh, Monique Snyders will uh, be rolled into the action here. The race will start next time round. Monique Snyders, rider who uh, is now being joined by the rest of the race, was a silver medalist in Los Angeles last year at the World Masters. So we are off and racing for 20 laps of the track, five kilometers. On this women's scratch race, 45.54. Several riders here with medals already in these championships. Alison nice Winship, the uh, Team Pursuit gold medalist. Uh, it's race number 58 for uh, Great Britain. Penny Porson finished fourth in the individual pursuit. She's number 54 for New Zealand. And another Team Pursuit gold medalist, in different age category for Gillian Anderson of Great Britain. She's number 46. Leading the uh, line of riders over the top is uh, Sonia Moy. She was the individual pursuit champion and set a new World Masters best time in the qualification round as well in that individual pursuit. She represents Norway. 17 laps to go. Second wheel as they go through, uh, that is Penny Porson who we mentioned, uh, the rider who uh, rode well in the individual pursuit for New Zealand. Good to see uh, Caroline uh, van Herakusen of the Netherlands, a regular competitor at the uh, World Masters, particularly here at the uh, National Cycling Centre in Manchester. This incident is the 27th edition of the World Masters, 20 of which have taken place here in Manchester. It's the home of the World Masters. And the first ever event was held as the World Masters Challenge more years ago than most of us care to remember. Fourteen laps to go. This is a quick reminder for riders involved in the next scratch race, which is the age category 35 to 44. In the absence of uh, any match sees in the men's sprint, 
We should be progressing relatively quickly into the next Scrunch Race final. So still all together, three kilometers remaining. Well, it's not quite an escape. Uh, the rider just uh, drifted off the front and was allowed to remain on that position due Patterson. Silver medalist in the uh, team pursuit for Great Britain. The orange of the white rear disc wheel. So uh, while she uh, rolls around at the bottom, now things begin to become more animated at the top of the track. First significant attacking move, a real uh, increase in pace here. The rider who's uh, provoked that is the individual pursuit gold medalist, uh, Sonia Boy. Norwegian rider has uh, split off a five rider leading group here. Christine Dirkle of the United States amongst them as well. And that uh, sudden acceleration has proved the undoing of a uh, rider who's been left behind here. This is uh, Fiona Walker of Great Britain. She is the back marker, the head of the races in the home straight. Five rider leading group with eight laps or two kilometers of racing to go. Jude Patterson trying to bridge the gap to that leading group. Fiona Walker being withdrawn just before she loses the lap. But that's attacking move. Look promising, but uh, the main field have uh, dragged them back in. So all back together again, bar the rider who has retired from the race, Fiona Walker. Prime moment for another attacking move, and here it comes with six laps to go. The acceleration this time coming from uh, Rachel Crew, silver medal in the uh, team pursuit, the rider from Great Britain. She has got uh, a lead as they go down the back straight, splitting the main field into two groups as well. Another rider is jettisoned out of the rear as the uh, pace increase takes its toll. Crew is caught back by the front part of the peloton with five laps remaining. Angela Simpson, the rider who's been dropped, runs well as from the uh, British National Masters in the scratch race back in uh, Newport, beginning of July. Once again, the elastic has stretched and contracted once more. The race all back together at the front. One kilometer remains. So as with the previous scratch race, building towards a sizable sprint for the line. Let's hope that everyone remains upright in this one. 750 meters to go. Once again, the rider attacked a couple of laps ago. Rachel Crew finds herself on the front. Doesn't want to commit yet. A bit far out to try and hold off the rest of the field. Any attacking move now has to be a decisive one. Riders trying to move around the outside. Don't want to get themselves boxed in as the uh, field is fan out and the pace increasing in the uh, final couple of laps. Starting to make a move over the top there is Sonia Moy once again. We know she's got a great turn of pace in that individual pursuit victory already this week. Lining out the front part of the race as once again five riders gain an advantage. One lap to go. Moy it is on the front being tracked by Monique Schneiders of the United States. Moy and Schneiders are leading two riders. Three chases then the main field. They're coming to the line this time. Can these two hold on? I think they can. Sonia Moy is on her way to crossing the line in first place for Norway. Second place taken by uh, Monique Schneiders of the United States of America. Again, two separate age categories involved in this race, so uh, the order across the line will not necessarily reflect the uh, medal presentations. Of course, the uh, first rider across the line will definitely be the winner of her age category, Sonia Moy. So well-judged move from Sonia Moy. It was the second attack that uh, she was involved in during the race. Went clear at just the right moment. Was swiftly joined by Schneiders. And those two made away from the rest of the field. And it was 
Elsa, boy who came out the winner. Six minutes 57 the race time, average speed of 43.165 kilometres per hour for the uh, women's grunt race, age category 45 to 54. So there is the order across the line. Sonia Moy of Norway in first place. Monique Schneiders of the United States second. Penny Pawson took third place for New Zealand. Carolyn van Herkusen of the Netherlands was uh, fourth. Fifth place went to Christine Dirkol of the United States. Sixth for Sherry Ann Prasalentis, also from the United States. So with no necessities uh, for race three in either the men's 35, 39 or 40, 44 sprint competitions. Our next racing action will be the women's scratch race 35 to 44 age category final. So another call please for riders in the uh, 35 to 44 age category scratch race, please report to the start line. So the following riders still required for the start of the next race. Number three, Charlotte Parnham. Number four, Theodora Rayner. Number 13, Alison Favarg. Number 14, Louise Haston. And number 20, Madeline Moore.
So 11 riders scheduled to take the start in this uh, women's scratch race, age category 35 to 44. 20 laps of the track, five kilometers. One non-starter from the originally published art list, uh, Madeleine Moore, of Great Britain. So 11 riders to contest this one. So we are underway. Again, two age categories here, 35, 39, and 40 to 44. A very colourful jersey on the shoulders of uh, Theodora Rayner of Great Britain. There's number four, if you uh, are trying to work out the number, it's actually upside down, but uh, she is number four. Four kilometres still to go, 16 laps of the track. And again, trying to regain the back of the bunch here is uh, Nicholas Soden. regular rider on both uh, road and criterium races during the uh, road season as well as of course a, uh, an accomplished track rider as well. Regular competitor at the Manchester Regional Track League here at the National Cycling Centre which resumes a week uh, tomorrow. opening and then very quickly closed down once more. 14 laps to go. In front here is uh, Karen McCaskill of New Zealand. move developing at the top of the track here. Right, who has uh, extricated herself from the bunch and is beginning to uh, put in a strong acceleration is Nicholas Soden. Charlotte Parlam, immediate response for Great Britain. Rise up to the wheel of Soden. And uh, one by one more riders also bridge that gap. So proving very difficult to get away here. Mainfield being very attentive to any potential attacking move. Again, the short distance of the race is uh, not conducive to long breakaway action. At the halfway point, when we come to the home straight this time, 10 laps gone, 10 laps to go. Alison Favarg on the front. She was the uh, Team Pursuit gold medalist from uh, a couple of days ago. Silver medal in the individual pursuit as well.
I hope Nation of Great Britain pretty strongly represented in this field. Just uh, two riders from elsewhere in the world, uh, Karen McCastle from New Zealand and uh, Brittany O'Neill from the United States. Eight laps, two kilometers remaining. This uh, women's 35 to 44 scratch race final. Pace slackening once more. No one prepared to commit just yet. Rebecca Remington of Great Britain on the front. Brittany O'Neill, the rider from the United States, in the uh, front row of the lowermost position at the moment. One and a half kilometres remaining. Still all together. Colours of story racing. With uh, Charlotte Parnham. The head of the race. Three riders wide across the track. Sarah Boyd and Nicholas Soden, riders who are just detached, they are uh, taking closer order now. One kilometre to go. It's again looking like a uh, sprint for the line for the majority of the riders here. It's the likely outcome of this one. Alison Favarg of Great Britain, briefly at the front. Charlotte Parnham, once again involved in the action, chasing down the rider who has gained a small advantage here. Two to go. So Parnham is in pursuit of uh, Clarice Chung of Great Britain. Mayfield once again closed the gap. Just one rider distanced. And I think is uh, Nicholas Soden. And Charlotte Parnham beginning the acceleration. One lap to go. Parnham looks over his shoulder. Going to be fully committed now. Parnham accelerating. Alison Favarg giving chase. Into the main field. Charlotte Parnham picked her moment. Can she hang on? She's got a sizable gap under the scoreboard for the final time and into the finishing straight. Charlotte Parnham is going to take this one. Parnham first across the line. Second place there taken by uh, Alison Favorg, and it looks like uh, Brittany O'Neill of the United States could well have uh, collected third place across the line. Remember, of course, there are two age categories on the track there, so we'll separate those riders out for the appropriate medal ceremonies.
So the order across line confirmed on the board for you, Charlotte Parnham from Alison Favard, from uh, Joanna Smith it was in uh, third place, and uh, Theodora Rayner, Louise Haston, Rebecca Remington and Brittany O'Neill. Call please for rider number 94, please to report for the victory ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Women's Scrap Race, age category 65 to 69. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, Chairman of the World Masters Organising Committee. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Australia, Beverly Anderson. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Women's Scratch Race, age category 60 to 64. The medals and jersey will be presented by Jessica Grandbois, UCI Track Coordinator. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing the United States of America, Lillian Fluke. In second place and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Lindsay Clark.
in first place, UCI Masters World Champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Australia, Julie Barnett. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Women's scratch race, age category 55 to 59. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, Chairman of the World Masters Organising Committee. In third place, a winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, Carol Scott. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Debbie Capewell. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Great Britain, Janet Berkmeyer. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Great Britain.
Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Women's Scratch Race, age category 50 to 54. The medals and jersey will be presented by Jessica Grandbois, the UCI Track Coordinator. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing Australia, Sherry Ann Prosolentis. In second place and winner of the silver medal, representing the United States of America, Christine Durko. In first place, UCI Masters world champion and winner of the gold medal, representing New Zealand, Penny Pawson. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Women's Scratch Race, age category 45 to 49. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, Chairman of the World Masters Organising Committee. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing the Netherlands, Carolyn van Herkuisen. In second place and winner of the silver medal representing the United States of America, Monique Schneiders. In first place, UCI Masters world champion and winner of the gold medal representing Norway, Sonja Moy. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Norway. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Women's Scratch Race, age category 40 to 44. The medals and jersey will be presented by Jessica Granvoy, the UCI Track Coordinator. 
In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, Rebecca Rimmington. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Louise Haston. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Great Britain, Alison Favarg. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Women's Scratch Race, age category 35 to 39. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, Chairman of the World Masters Organising Committee. In third place, a winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, Theodora Rayner. In second place and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Joanna Smith. In first place, UCI Masters world champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Great Britain, Charlotte Parnham.
Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists. So our competition programme will continue now with uh, men's time trial action, age category 45 to 49. We have eight heats to be contested in this one. The uh, first heat will feature Axel Boland of the Netherlands in the home straight and Juha Kettinen of Finland in the back straight.
So the first of the 80s, three laps of the track, 750 metres. Axel Boll of the Netherlands and uh, Juha Kettinen of Finland. Bolland making margin of the faster start. Well, tall figure of uh, Juha Kettinen. In the all black. Approaching the uh, final lap here. Still advantage for uh, Bolland of the Netherlands in the home straight. Close, but uh, it's advantage and uh, victory in that one for Juha Kettinen. The time of 53.846. And the time for Axel Bolland of the Netherlands, 54.412. So we move on to heat two, and I understand we've only got one rider here. So Bruce Kroll of Great Britain will start in the home straight. Second countdown, ticking away for uh, Bruce Kroll of Great Britain. Just uh, securing the feet into uh, the pedals. Great pressure applied, of course, through the pedals to uh, get the bike underway. Getting an important, uh, yeah, a good start is very important in a short time event such as this one. So, like 10 seconds to go. So Bruce Kroll underway on his own. David Woodhouse failed to present in the back straight. So just uh, Bruce Kroll in this heat. Time to beat 53.846, posted by Juha Kettinen of Finland in the preceding heat. Good start by Kroll. And to uh, complete the opening lap in 19.542, uh, that's faster than uh, Kettinen. Can keep this momentum going. We could be looking at a new leader here, still uh, one lap to go when he gets to the line this time. Very colourful jersey for uh, Bruce Kroll of Great Britain. Half a lap to go. Still fastest, 41.612. At the halfway split, and he comes across the line now to stop the clock in a new fastest time, 49.660. The first beating of 50 seconds by Bruce Kroll of Great Britain. Heat three will be next to go. Starting in the home straight will be Harald Finnesand of Norway. And his opponent in the back straight, representing the United States, will be Charles Moore. Incidentally, the World Masters' best time for this discipline, held since, uh, 19, uh, since 2021, I should say the 18th of August, in fact, 2021, by Einar's Kixis of Latvia. Was uh, posted at altitude in Aguascalientes in Mexico, so unlikely to be beaten here at uh, sea level in Manchester. Uh, time was 47.247. That's when Manos uh, Kixis was in this 45 to 49 years of age category.
Heat three gets away from the line. Arnold Finnesand of Norway and uh, Charles Moore of the United States. Finnesand and the uh, familiar Norwegian colours, red with the uh, blue cross on the back. And Moore in the uh, purple and black colours. Let's see who's made the batter start of these two. Oh, it's very close indeed, but uh, just a marginal advantage for Finnesand after the opening lap. Neither currently as fast as Bruce Kroll. Time to beat 49.660. From the sound beginning to pull ahead here. Be half a lap to go for both riders this time. Can Charles Moore find anything to uh, try and hit back against Harold Finnesand? It looks as though Finnesand will be the winner of this one. Yes, indeed, he is. The time, of course, all important. And that second fastest time for uh, Harold Finnesand of Norway at 51.754. And the time recorded by Charles Moore of the United States, 52.794. Current standings after the uh, first three heats. Bruce Kroll and Great Britain, the only rider to beat 50 seconds so far. Heat four will be up next and taking the start here. Representing France will be Jean-Luc Chambry and his opponent from Brazil in the back straight, Fabio Rosetto. Heat four, both riders uh, depart successfully from the starting gate. Chambrin of France in the home straight, Rosetto of Brazil in the back straight. Still not time to eat, Bruce Kroll's 49.660. Rosetto the fastest after the opening 250 meters. Let's see if we can keep the pace going over through the remaining two laps. Third fastest overall for Rosetto currently. Chambrin beginning to uh, lift his effort a little. It's the uh, final half lap for both riders. Still advantage for Brazil and uh, Fabio Rosetto. This will be close, but uh, Brazil will take it. Fabio Rosetto in a time of 53.256. Good enough for fourth fastest time at the moment. And the time for Jean-Luc Chambrun, the rider who started in the home straight, 53.852. Heat number five coming out to take the start in the home straight, representing the USA will be Martins Walk and his opponent from Czechia in the back straight is David Gothart.
So he finally gets underway. Martin's walk versus uh, David Gothard. Still only one rider inside 50 seconds. That's Bruce Crawl of Great Britain, 49.660. So Gothard has made the fastest start. And is settling into uh, the rhythm now. Still advantage for David Gothard. Time critical, of course. The fastest three rides will take the medals at the end of this time trial. And Gothard currently foot running in fourth fastest time. One lap to go. Can this walk find any reserves to try and challenge uh, David Gothard of Czechia? Lining up for the finish, and this is going to be victory for Gothard. It's time 51.436, second fastest time for uh, David Gothard of Czechia. And his opponent, Martin Walk of the United States, is time 53.290. Three heats still to go in this uh, men's 45-49 time trial final. Heat number six next on track, representing Italy and taking the start in the home straight will be Dario Zampieri. And his opponent from Australia in the back straight will be Bernie Swart. Sixth heat departs from the start line. Dario Zampieri of Italy and the Bernie Swart of Australia. Still no one yet inside that uh, 50 second margin, with the exception of our leader, Bruce Crowell of Great Britain. Just two more heats to go following this one. Second fastest pace for Dario Zampieri, the completion of the opening lap. Swart, let's dig a little deeper. Zampieri storming around the track. One lap to go. Still second fastest, 35.035 for Zampieri and 37.900 for Swart. So this is going to be uh, honours for Italy as Dario Zampieri crosses the line now and stops the clock in 50.729. Second fastest time so far and eighth fastest for Bernie Swart of Australia in 53.332. So Bruce Crowell of Great Britain still tops the leaderboard. He'll be watching with nervous anticipation the uh, final couple of heats. Heat number seven will feature in the home straight the rider who took the bronze medal at the uh, Masters in Los Angeles last year, Joshua Ryan of the United States of America. And his opponent, also from the USA, in the back straight is Joshua McDonald.
And also with heat underway, Joshua Ryan and Joshua McDonald. It's uh, McDonald who's made comfortable the fastest start here, and it's critical to get underway as swiftly as possible in these short events. So that's certainly an advantage for uh, McDonald. Second fastest at the completion of the uh, opening lap. Ryan just uh, ninth fastest at the moment. One lap to go. Still advantage for McDonald. Still second fastest time. And he's going to hold on to that position and cross the line. Just dropping one place to third for uh, Joshua McDonald. 50.965. And at the uh, time for the sixth place rider at the moment, Joshua Ryan of the United States was 52.257. So the eighth and final heat, starting in the home straight, the defending champion, he took the gold medal in Los Angeles at the World Masters last year. Representing France is Geoffroy Soulain and his opponent, the silver medalist from LA 12 months ago, representing New Zealand, Chris Allington. So the defending champion gets underway in the home straight. His time on the way to the gold medal in Los Angeles last year was 50.459. He'd have to go faster than that if he's to overhaul Bruce Cole. Still the only rider inside 50 seconds. So guaranteed at least a bronze medal. He'd be hoping for better than that though. Completion of the opening lap. Let's look at the pace of the defending champion. He's only third fastest. Allington seventh fastest. So both of last year's gold and silver medalists will need to lift the game in the closing lap. Lane in the home straight and Allington in the back straight. One lap to go. Advantage for France. Second fastest now for Soleil. He's clawing his way up the standings. Can he improve further and uh, snatch the goal away from Briz Kroll? Half a lap to go. Agonisingly close. Geoffroy Soleil of France comes towards the line in the home straight and will stop the clock. Second fastest. So silver medal for Geoffroy Soleil in 50.241. Bronze will go to Chris Allington of New Zealand in 50.443, but the winner of the gold medal, the only rider to go faster than 50 seconds for Great Britain, Bruce Kroll. So our big screen uh, summarising neatly the outcome of the men's 45-49 time trial. With that goal going to Bruce Carl of Great Britain, silver Geoffroy Sulane of France and the bronze to Chris Allington of New Zealand. So we move on the age category to 50 to 54 now. The uh, first heat is a solo ride in the home straight for the rider representing Switzerland, Johnny Gasser.
So Johnny Gasser departs from the start line. The familiar colours, the uh, red with the white cross on the back of Switzerland for uh, Johnny Gasser. One lap completed, just two laps in this age category, so 500 metres the total distance. And here he comes into the finishing straight. This will establish the benchmark time in this competition. 38.108 the time for Johnny Gasser of Switzerland. Heat two of the 13 heats that make up this men's time trial 50 to 54 competition. And starting in the home straight, representing Ireland will be Tom Gentleman and his opponent from Australia in the back straight, John Paul Dickinson. Well, I mentioned the world master's best time in the uh, previous age category. It was held by Einar's Kixis, and uh, moving on in years, he also took the world master's best time in this age category as well. It's 32.452 in Aguascalientes in Mexico back in August 2022, and uh, Einar's Kixis goes in the final heat. Well, you can see the effort required to get on top of the gear as uh, Tom Gentleman strains away from the starting gate. His opponent, John Paul Dickinson, has made uh, considerably the fastest start of the two. Time to beat 38.108, posted by uh, Johnny Gasser of Switzerland in the opening heat. Advantage currently with uh, John Paul Dickinson of Australia. He's faster than Gasser at the equivalent distance as well. He is eating up the ground towards his opponent, Tom Gentleman. And at the time for John Paul Dickinson of Australia, 36.572. He is our new leader. And the time for Tom Gentleman of Ireland, 41.165. So heat number three, this will be a lone ride in the back straight by Simon Dixon of Ireland. He's a uh, rider who is going to face in the home straight. is a non-starter, John Blackwell. So just about ready in the back straight for Simon Dixon of Ireland. 36.572 at the new target time.
Simon Dixon of Ireland, next rider on track here. No opponent to judge his pace against. Literally one man against the clock. 36572. With the figure foremost in his mind. Completion of the opening lap. He's second fastest, 21.775 after the first 250 metres. Has he got anything left to offer in the closing half lap? Try and take the lead away from uh, John Paul Dickinson. Oh, went very wide coming out of uh, corner two. Clock hasn't stopped, so we'll give you uh, confirmation of his time in a moment. He's uh, definitely lost uh, his line out of uh, the final corner before crossing the line. The time on the board is not correct. We'll give you a correction in a moment. And the crazy time is 38.110 for Simon Dixon of Ireland. Third fastest time posted so far. Next up we have heat number four starting in the home straight representing Chile is Luis Morales and in the back straight for Greece, Christos Rantos. So heat four gets away, Luis Morales of Chile and uh, Christos Orantas of Greece. Thirty-six five seven two. the time for John Paul Dickinson, still stands as the fastest so far. Let's see what these two can do about that. Second fastest for Rantos and fifth fastest for Morales. Improving by one place at the completion of the next half lap. Christos Rantos through the line in 36.598. Could be up for second place at the moment. And Luis Morales in 37.941. That puts him in third at the moment. Next riders almost ready to go. Starting in the home straight for Norway is Harry Alderland, and in the back straight for the United States of America, Mike Dansell.
Norway versus USA in this one. And the Dansell made marginal the fastest start. Third fastest rider away from the line compared to Hong Kong, who is seventh fastest. Into the second lap. And it looks like very evenly matched as they come towards the finish line, just in favour, I think, of Holderland. Yes, he's uh, the winner of this heat, third versus time overall for uh, Harry Holderland of Norway in 36.999. And the time for Mike Dansell of the United States, fourth versus 37.065. So just uh, six hundredths of a second separating them in favour of the Norwegian competitor. Heat six of the 13 heats that make up this men's time trial 50 to 54 age category. Starting in the home straight, representing France will be Rudy Gallien and his opponent from Czechia in the back straight, Peter Malasek. Heat six underway. Looks like uh, Malashek made the fastest start, second fastest departure of this competition so far for uh, Petr Malashek of Czechia. Can he keep the momentum going? He's comfortably ahead of uh, Gallon at the moment. So Petr Malashek of Czechia is first to arrive at the finish line, 36.718, third fastest time for him. And Rudy Gallien of France in a time of 38.499, ninth fastest in classification order so far. Next up will be heat number seven. This is an all-British battle starting in the home straight. It will be Lee Staples and his opponent in the back straight, Tony Brooks. Strong support, of course, both British riders here. Ten 
Tanya Brooks makes marginally the faster start. In fact, the fastest start we've seen so far in this time trial. Staples hitting back hard. First and second, respectively, these two. Can they keep it going? Half a lap remains. And it looks like Staples has pulled ahead sufficiently, not only to win this heat, but also to take the lead in the competition. Lee Staples time, 35.878, the new leader. And Tony Brooks finishing in fourth spot, 36.647. On to Heat 8, Australia represented in the home straight by Daniel Rickard and his opponent from Poland in the back straight is Zazek Sobiek. So Daniel Rickard finished fourth overall in the sprint yesterday in this age category. First appearance on the track of uh, Lezek Sobizek in these uh, World Masters Championships. Third fastest time for Sobizek as uh, he uh, completes the first half lap. But uh, Rickard is fast, uh, faster than uh, everyone so far. Can he be, keep, it going, keep it going to the uh, conclusion of this one? Daniel Rickard. Turns for home and will cross the line in a new fastest time, 33.576 for Daniel Rickard of Australia. On the time for Lezek Sobizek of Poland, 38.088. Next on track, Marcel Lorenz of Germany, sprint gold medalist, will take on James Daniels of Norway. So Lorenz home straight, Daniels in the back straight. Heat nine. Both riders powering away from the line. Marcel Lorenz in the home straight, James Daniels in the back straight. It's Lorenz who has made considerably the fastest start. We have just two laps, that could be uh, very significant already. The uh, fastest time on the scoreboard, not reflecting the riders on the track at the moment, so uh, bear with us on that. 
without doubt, Marcel Laurens will be the faster of these two. He crosses the line to complete his ride. And James Daniels will complete in the back straight. Time's with you in just a moment. So the times for the preceding heat, uh, Marcel Laurens of Germany, 34.568, and uh, James Daniels of Norway, 39.240. Next up, heat 10, uh, starting in the home straight, representing Finland will be Harry Rajanimi, and his opponent from Czechia in the back straight, Peter Nervant. Heat 10 underway, Harry Rojanami of Finland and uh, Peter Nervert of uh, Czechia. Seventh and eighth fastest in favour of uh, Nervert. Start of that one. It's uh, Rojanami picking up the pace up to second fastest time. Half a lap to go. Rajanobi storming around the track here at the uh, National Cycling Centre. Here he comes towards the finish line and stops the clock in 35.625, third fastest, just fading towards the end of that one for Harry Rajanobi of Finland and fifth fastest time for Petr Novert of Czechia in 36.558. So uh, Daniel Rickard of Australia, still our leader, the only riders to beat uh, 34 seconds so far, 33.576. Three more heats to go, and uh, starting in heat number 11 in the home straight, last year's sprint gold medalist from Los Angeles, who was uh, the bronze medalist this time around from Japan, Rishi Ichimoto will start in the home straight and his opponent from Great Britain in the back straight. Silver medalist at the British National Masters in the time trial for Richard Pepper.
So, Ichimoto versus Pepper in Heat 11. Little to choose between after the first half lap. 33.576, still the target time. Third fastest for Ichimoto, but second fastest for Pepper. Into the closing quarter lap. Fortunes have changed. Ichimoto all across the line in third fastest time. Time of 34.579 for Ichi Ichimoto of Japan. And fourth fastest at this stage of the competition for Richard Pepper of Great Britain in 35.075. So the penultimate heat is prepared, ready for the start. Richard Clark of Great Britain, British National Masters Team uh, Talent Trial Champion in the home straight, and uh, Marek Piotr Skorski of Poland will start in the back straight. So 12 underway, strong support for um, Great Britain and Poland here. Richard Clark just marginally ahead of the first half lap. One lap gone, he's still ahead by about a bike length or so in distance ahead of uh, Marek Piotr Skorski of Poland. Half a lap to go. Can Clark hold on? More importantly, what is the time at the end of this ride? Here he comes, stops the clock. A second first is 34.166 for Richard Clark of Great Britain. And fifth fastest time for Marek Piotr Skorski of Poland in the back straight. So one more heat to go, starting in the home straight, representing the United States of America, the rider who took the bronze medal in the time trial in his home nation, the United States, when the Masters took place in Los Angeles last year for William Wong. And in the back straight, the man who holds the World Masters best time for this particular discipline from Latvia, second in the sprint here yesterday for Einar's Kicks, 13th and final heat in the men's time trial 50 to 54.
So the final heat of the way, William Wong versus Einar's Kixis. USA versus Latvia. Wong, as I mentioned, the bronze medalist in this uh, competition in LA last year. Looking to uh, go one or even two places better here this evening. Kixis is faster at the uh, first time check. Second fastest overall for Einar's Kixis. His record of 32.452. And across the line he goes, not a new record time, but a new fastest time, and saving the best for last, the gold medal will go to Einar's Kixis of Latvia at a time of 33.392. And fourth fastest time for William Wong, 34.401. So Einar's Kixis displaces long-time leader Daniel Ricard of Australia down to second place in silver medal position. And the bronze medal, well that will go to uh, Richard Clark of Great Britain.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Men's time trial, age category 45 to 49. The medals and jersey will be presented by uh, Jessica Grandpa, the UCI track coordinator. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing New Zealand, Chris Allington. In second place and winner of the silver medal, representing France, Geoffrey Soulon. In first place, UCI Masters world champion and winner of the gold medal, representing the Great Britain, Bruce Kroll. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Men's time trial, age category 50 to 54. The medals and the jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, Chairman of the World Masters Organising Committee. In third place, a winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, Richard Clark. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Australia, Daniel Rickard. In first place, UCI Masters world champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Latvia, Einars Kiksis. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Latvia. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists.
So competition continues with the medal rides in the men's individual pursuit, age category uh, 55 to 59. The bronze medal final lineup on the track in the home straight, representing Australia, Peter Felstead, and his opponent in the back straight for Great Britain is Martin Perrett. These two riders very evenly matched in the uh, qualification ride earlier today. Parents time 224.789 and Felsted's 224638. Not reflected at the moment in the positions on the track. Advantage for uh, Peter Felsted currently by 3.067. Inside the second kilometre, 750 metres to go. Work to do here for uh, Martin Perrin, 3.143. Still in favour of uh, Peter Felsen of Australia. Final two laps. Can Martin Perrett dig deep and find something to try and hit back at the pace of Peter Felstead? This battle for the bronze medal. And with one lap to go, Australia look favourite. Martin Perrett has begun to uh, close the gap to uh, Peter Felstead, but he's left it too late. Half a lap to go. Peter Felstead of Australia rounds the corner into the finishing straight and will cross the line and take the bronze medal at a time of 2.24.189 and the time for Martin Perrett 2.25.534 so a good fight back for Martin Perrett but not quite good enough to overhaul Peter Felstead who is our bronze medal winner. Moving on now to the uh, gold and silver medal ride. Starting in the home straight, Robert Mizio of Great Britain and his opponent in the back straight from the United States of America is Brian Haas.
Robert Musia, the uh, founder of the two in qualification earlier today. He's told in 221.222 and uh, Brian Hollis 224.019. Not always a fair reflection of the times posted in the final, the qualification times, but uh, good indication perhaps that uh, Robert Musia will start as the favourite here. Brian Haas has gone away faster. 1.703 the deficit for Museo in the home straight. One and a half kilometres remaining. Still with the upper hand and the gap increasing, 2.619 now in favour of uh, Brian Haas in the United States. So he kept a little bit in reserve from uh, the qualification round earlier today. Can Robert Musio lift it in the final three laps? Still got work to do here. Gap is 3.059. It's a tall order to close that in uh, what will be two laps and the riders reach the starting stations this time. Ah, oh, just turning into the same straight as Museum. Both riders will take the bell this time round. And it's uh, Brian Haas who will hear it first. The gap with a lap to go is 2.563. So once again, Robert Musio is starting to try and fight back, but leaving it, I fear, far too late to overcome the uh, pace of uh, Brian Huss. Who has the finish line in sight, and with it, a gold medal. Time 2.20.011. Your gold medal winner for the United States is Brian Haas. And the silver goes to Robert Musio of Great Britain in 2.21.484. Brian Haas improving by uh, more than four seconds his time for qualification this morning to uh, secure that gold medal. So we move the age category to uh, 60-64 for the medal finals in the men's individual pursuit. Starting with the bronze medal final. And, uh, taking the start in this one in the home straight, representing Australia will be Gary Mandy. And in the back straight, representing Great Britain, Adrian Dent. Bronze medal final gets underway. Well, Adrian Dent, who uh, starts in the back straight, was last year's gold medal winner in Los Angeles. His opponent here, Gary Mandy, already a gold medalist here this week, taking the time trial gold in the 60-64 age category.
Well, very evenly matched in terms of time this morning in the qualification round. Gary Mandy margin of faster, 223, 128. And Adrian Dent, 223, 8.40. So just seven tenths of a second separated them this morning. Mandy's still ahead at the moment. Looking to uh, translate that medal winning form from the time trial to the uh, longer distance here in the individual pursuit. The deficit for Adrian Dent just 0.707 of a second. So this uh, one's still very much in the balance here. 750 metres to go, and it'll be uh, two laps remaining when they get to the line next time. Let's look at the time gap now. Has it grown? Yes, it has. So uh, Adrian Dent looks as though he's closing in on Gary Mandy, but he's slipping down uh, again a little bit in terms of the pace required. Gary Mundy redoubling his efforts here. Looking for a second podium here at these at World Masters here on day three. And they're into the final lap, 2.482, the deficit for Adrian Dent. Well, he's uh, going backwards now, so Gary Mundy, one more corner to negotiate. Ahead of, ahead of him lies the finish, and the cross line goes. Gold, uh, sorry, bronze medal, which is the second for uh, Gary Mundy in 2.21.224. And uh, fourth place for Adrian Dent in And so we come to the gold medal final. It's an all-British affair, starting in the home straight. Ryder, who has already been on the top step of the podium here on day one, when he took the gold medal in the scratch race final. He is Mike Twelves, taking the start in the home straight, and his opponent is Mark Whiffin, who will start in the back straight. Well, mechanical difficulties have beset Mark Whiffen, whose uh, front wheel has deflated at a very inopportune moment. I suppose it's uh, more opportune than uh, during the course of the ride. So, uh, mechanic sprinting to uh, obtain a new front wheel. So, a slight delay to the start of this one. Mike Thomas decides to uh, have a more comfortable seat for a few moments.
So as with every evening session at these at World Masters 2023, we have live stream coverage on YouTube. You can find the uh, precise address where you need to point your favorite browser or YouTube viewing device to be able to rewatch any of the uh, evening sessions of the entire week of racing. And of course, it's live when the racing is taking place at the moment. So if you're listening in on our YouTube channel, I hope you're enjoying the action. So it's the uh, mechanic under pressure currently, trying to uh, perform a high speed wheel change for uh, Mark Whiffen. Of course, no quick release on a track bike. This requires uh, a spanner to do the job. Swiftly executed bike on its way back to the starting gate. So it'll be almost ready to go for the start of the gold medal final in the men's individual pursuit, 60 to 64 years of age category. So the men's individual pursuit gold medal final, Mike Twelves in the home straight, Mark Whiffin in the back straight. Eight laps of the track to decide the medals and the podium positions. Six six one in favour of Mike Twelves at the moment. Twelves, that's a scratch race win on day one of these championships. Already been on the top step of the podium. Hoping to uh, repeat that feat here this evening. Next time round, it'll just be a kilometre remaining. One point five three six, the deficit for Whiffen currently. So uh, Mark Whiffin needs to try and up his game here in the closing stages. 750 metres to go. Mike Twelve still ahead. Uh, the gap remains, 1.6 seconds. and claws back two tenths of a second that time round. That's out the bell this time and just one lap to go. Not sure they will spur both riders on. It's a, it's still an advantage for Mike Twelves. 1.3 seconds. So Whiffen is closing him down slightly. But Mike Twelves has less than half a lap to go to take his second gold medal of these championships. Here he comes across the line. Stop Scott in 219.947. So Mike Tolls is your gold medal winner. Silver goes to Mark Whiffin of Great Britain. And the bronze medal taken by Gary Mandy of Australia.
So the next event on track, first of three scratch race finals for the men, age category 65-69 on the track now. A full field, all 24 riders lining up for the start of this one. Well, amongst the lineup here, we have uh, the defending champion uh, from Great Britain. Steve Cronshaw was the uh, gold medal winner in the 65-69 uh, scratch race last year in Los Angeles. We're hoping to uh, repeat the feat here this evening. So half the field line up on the fence, half line up on the blue band at the bottom of the track. Once our starter is happy that everyone is present and correct, the whistle will roll them away. And the completion of the rolling lap, the gun shot will set them off and racing. 20 laps of the track, five kilometers for this men's 65 and 69 scratch race final. So away we go. Some riders here already been in action in the uh, team pursuit. Yesterday, Gary Hartwell, Jay Walcott, <laughs> Kieran Rutherford. Robert Cole as well. Steve Cronshaw, the defending champion, was race number 4 1 0. If you want to pick him out from amongst the 24 riders on track, no mistaking the nationality of uh, the rider at the front of the line here. That's uh, Robert Cole of the United States of America. Did you spot it from the jersey? So two riders begin to build an advantage here. 18 laps to go. That's David Morgan of the United States. And also on the attack there is Sylvan Adams of Israel. Quick response from the main field. Realizes the danger of allowing riders to escape at this early stage. Murray Nolan of the United States takes up the lead. Immediately opens a small advantage, just a handful of metres ahead of the chasing peloton. 16 laps to go. So Nolan not really distancing the pack behind. Good deal of effort here. But, uh, could well find himself swept up by uh, the uh, head of the main field. Dragging the group across the gap is David Morgan of the United States. So Nolan is caught, all back together at the front. One long line of riders down the back straight. Looks like an audacious move from uh, two thirds of the way down the bunch. Trying to work his way over the top here. 14 laps to go. Just uh, choosing his gap curve with James Joseph from Guyana into uh, fourth place. It's 
was a little French at the front of the main field. So four leading riders with 13 laps to go. So Graham Barty of Great Britain has made that uh, move off the front as well, along with uh, Andy Stubbs of Great Britain. It's again short-lived as the main field react. And uh, Bill Gordon is the man on the front that time through the line for Australia with 12 laps or three kilometers to go. And this men's 65-69 scratch race final all back together. Constant attacks, but proving very difficult indeed to get away. Here comes another one over the top. 11 laps remaining. Well, a moment's hesitation in chasing this one down. Could prove profitable for the rider who's gone off the front. All the fours on the front. That is a Jay Wolkoff of the United States. A lone chaser sets off in pursuit. Off. You notice using the height of the banking coming out of corner two there to get a little bit of extra velocity down the back straight. Two chasers behind. Graham Nisbet and uh, Graham Barkley. They're going to catch up with Walkoff, so the leader is now joined by two further riders. Three leading riders now, the head of the race coming into the finishing straight. One lone chaser, then the main field at corner three. Eight laps to go. So our three leaders into the finishing straight. Seven laps remaining. No chaser still caught between the three leaders and uh, riders now firing off the front of the main field. Very fast closing two man chasing group here. Six laps to go. So the lead group swells to five. The big split with uh, four individual chasers in the gap. Down to five laps remaining. The uh, defending champion, Steve Cronshaw, is the last man who'll get onto that lead group. Nine riders strong now. One by one more riders bridging across. Final kilometre. Riding on the front is uh, Laurie Nolan of uh, the United States. I'm just struggling a little bit of the pace, he's going backwards again. But uh, a significant regrouping here with three laps to go. The next move will have to be the decisive one to get closer and closer to the finish line. Well, Carl as the rider has been uh, distanced by the largest margin here off the back. And our attention clearly focused on the front of the race. Once again, uh, Sylvan Adams of Israel, there or thereabouts. Two laps remaining. Lots of looking around now. Looking to move uh, around is uh, Shannon Fox of the United States. Going to get on terms of that lead group as well. And it'll be the bell one lap to go this time. The front is now the place you need to be. Those riders further down the field won't see the front of this race again. Here we go into the final lap, powering down the back straight. One long line of riders, but uh, who is going to take the victory? The advantage, the inside line could well prove favourable here. Speeding towards the finish line and to take the win, and that goes to uh, Gore, Bill Gordon of uh, Australia. So we'll confirm the full result for you in a few moments. Well done to all riders involved in that uh, very attacking 
Scratch race for the uh, 65 69 age category. So stand by, here is the full result for you. Bill Gordon is your winner for Australia. Lawrence Nolan second for the United States and third, Graham Bartley for Great Britain. So the riders are lining up for the men's scratch race, age category 70 to 74. Including the most of them uh, bronze silver medalist from Los Angeles last year in the scratch race, uh, Christian Mousselet of France. So just a little bit of uh, attention being given to one rider here before the uh, lineup is complete. Fourteen riders who uh, take the start in this one. I should give a mention to two long-time supporters of the World Masters Track Cycling Championships here in Manchester, both of whom are in this race. 
Number 450, Martin Bush of Great Britain. And, uh, so, Ken Bostick of the United States. Also makes the lineup, we have uh, former UCI president Brian Cookson of Great Britain. Number 454. Brian's been training hard on the boards of the National Cycling Centre over recent weeks to hone his form ahead of the uh, championship ride here this evening. So we are underway for 20 laps of the track. The man with the hypnotic rear disc wheel in the colours of uh, his home club, the uh, South End Wheelers, is Bob Barber. The World Masters champion. So the stars are happy they're all together. Fires the gun to get them underway. Walter to Thornhill of South Africa, the last man in the line in the green and black. Bob Barber on the front. Welcome Freeman of Great Britain just uh, relinquishes the lead as they uh, swing into the back straight. 19 laps to go. in second place. Kent Bostick just uh, hovering around at the head of the race as well. Whilst they uh, focus their attention at the top of the track, Ryan is sneaking underneath them here. Plenty of room to do so. the march on the rest of the field. Ken Bostick was first to respond. All back together. But maybe a sign of things to come. 16 laps remaining. Four kilometres to go. Martin Freeman of Great Britain once again finds himself at the head of the race. So Mark Altamirano of the United States in the red and grey colours occupies the lead position at the moment, 14 laps to go. Jean-Louis Dublet of France, one of the uh, quite low mounted numbers there. Still all together. Well, several riders have uh, tried their hands at an escape, but uh, the main field have always been quick to respond. Three kilometres to go. Martin Bush at the uh, back of the group here. Approaching the halfway mark. Next time round, it'll be 10 laps to go. Two and a half kilometers or 10 laps remain. Feeling the uh, tension building here. This race may be uh, 
Sean explode into action while Barber sneaks away off the front. As much as you can sneak away with such a visible rear wheel on your machine, but uh, Mayfield noting his departure and uh, up the pace to make sure he doesn't get too big an advantage. Pursuit being led by uh, Ken Bostick of the United States. And uh, Barber brought back into the fold relatively quickly. That's uh, caused a fracture further down the field though. With five riders distanced. But, uh, Pace is still moderate at the head of the race. They'll uh, reattach themselves. And by Brian Cookson, that little uh, rejoining group at the rear of the peloton. Eight laps to go. Well, he tried it once. It's worth another go. Bob Barber once again goes on the attack. This time, the pursuit once again, in fact, being led by Ken Bostick. Mark Altamirano at the front of the chase group. Barber swings up, so that leaves Bostic on the front with Altamirano leading the chase in second place on the track. Six laps to go. Quick look over the shoulder from Ken Bostic. Applies a bit more pressure to the pedals. That has caused a split in the main field. Bob Barber, who's twice been off the front now, in danger of losing contact at the back of the race here. The length of the back straight now for uh, 14 riders in this men's 70-74 scratch race final. Still, Ken Bostick is sticking to the front of the race. But uh, the adhesive, unfortunately, has broken for Bob Barber. Well, if they slow down once again, they may just be able to rejoin. So they won't be slowing down for too long. There's just uh, four laps, one kilometre still to go. All back together at the front. Ken Bostick, and on his wheel is uh, Malcolm Freeman of Great Britain. And they're obligingly slowing it down so Bob Barber can rejoin at the rear, just in time, I suspect, for the acceleration. Three laps to go. And making the move now is uh, Ivor Thomas of Great Britain. Again, they swing up. Not far to go now. Two laps remain as they come around this time. Oh, Baba dropped decisively now as Kent Bostick begins the acceleration, lining out the front of the bunch here. One lap to go. Bell this time. Bostick has uh, Christian Musle on his wheel, last year's silver medalist. Five riders break clear. Down the back straight we go. Musle trying to get on terms with Bostick as they come under the scoreboard for the final time into the finishing straight. And on the front of the Ken Bostick, so close for second. Between Freeman and Musle, we'll wait for the uh, photo finish decision on that one. But uh, subject to confirmation, it looked like Ken Bostick of the United States. First across the line, he's already celebrating, he's in no doubt. Please leave the track in the back straight next time round. So we wait with bated breath to uh, see the decision for that second and third place, the silver and bronze medal positions. See Musle and uh, Mark Freeman. In my view, just behind of the line, I couldn't separate them. Well, it was Malcolm Freeman just ahead of Christian Buzelay. So Ken Bostick is your World Masters Champion for this age category and gold medal winner. Malcolm Freeman takes the silver medal in second and Christian Buzelay of France gets the bronze in third place.
So to our final scratch race, and this is for the men age category 75 plus. Fourteen riders to take the start in this one. So, uh, lined up and ready to go. And third in line on the inside of the track is a multiple World Masters medal winner over the years in lots of different age categories. Of course, is Jeff Cook. Great to see Jeff on board his machine ready to contest this scratch race final. He is, of course, the defending champion as well, taking the title in Los Angeles 12 months ago. Unfortunately, we have a crash in the neutralized lap. So riders, please stay high on the track whilst we uh, recover the situation on corner one. So the race stopped. I think it started, but uh, riders just need to uh, leave the track and the race will be restarted. Please report that uh, both riders involved are uh, up and walking and or riding. So hopefully they'll both be able to take the restart. Larry Risbrook is one of them, making his way back to the starting line. The other rider who uh, came down that, making his way around the back straight to rejoin the field in the home straight.
So the riders uh, roll away. Hopefully a more successful departure from the uh, start line this time. So the general idea is that they're all together when uh, the gun fires. So our starter just saying we need to reform into one complete peloton before the race gets underway. These two riders have been distanced significantly already. So I think we're going to get the start this time. So the men's 75 plus scratch race underway. Graham True Love of Great Britain, the man on the front. Second wheel here is uh, Colin Claxton. Robert Ricks and the riders distance off the back. Laurie Risbrook, of course, who was involved in that tumble. The rider who's about to uh, lose a lap as they come into the finishing straight is John King. He too was involved in that uh, little tumble at the start. I think he's uh, decided to retire. So at least three, no, four riders off the back. Back market is currently Lawrence Risbrook of Great Britain. Nine riders in the lead group. Michel Briat of France, third wheel at the moment, just behind him, the defending champion, Jeff Cook of Great Britain. Archer's book goes one lap down as the main field catch and pass him. John Mason now the back marker as the head of the race comes into the finishing straight with 14 laps remaining. James Cross, the bronze medalist from Los Angeles last year, is amongst the riders in that league group. So uh, Earl Henry has uh, lost some ground here as well. Another rider who's been uh, one of the mainstays of uh, Masters racing here at Manchester. In all the years here, we have promoted the World Masters Truck Cycling Championships. Head of the race is the main field at the uh, pursuit line in the back straight. A couple of back markers about to be swept up when they come around corner four. Three kilometres to go. Acceleration here from uh, Graham Truelove of Great Britain. So George Grant and uh, Robert Ricks lose a lap as the leading group go past them. Rory Risbrook here is also a lap down. And also losing a lap now is Earl Henry. Book has retired from the race, having lost a second lap. The field being whittled down here. Eight riders remain in the leading group. Jeff Cook sitting uh, in fourth place. Just behind.
by Michelle Briant of France. And the great true love doing a lot of work on the front here. Lap down now for John Mason as well. He's uh, withdrawn from the race. So the main field, they are at the head of the race. Three riders off the back, already one or more laps behind. Claxton behind Trula, then it's uh, Briant and Cook. Mark Rodemaker and Michel Francois France, also in the main field. Those three lapped riders retire as well. So all the riders who remain on the track are on the lead lap now with five laps to go. So eight riders remain in contention. That little move and the defending champion Jeff Cook has decided this is the one to go with three laps to go. George Grant there as well. So Lacroix, Cook, and Grant. It's uh, not been allowed to escape yet. Two laps remaining. Joining the party at the front now. Uh, Colin Claxton as well. Claxton in the black and white at the top of the track. Looking to go over the top here. One lap to go this time. Defending champion Jeff Cook moves up into second wheel. Claxton has gone though. Colin Claxton of New Zealand being pursued by defending champion Jeff Cook of Great Britain. It's going between these two riders for the gold medal. Speeding down the back straight. Claxton still holding on. Jeff Cook. And all his sprinting ability to the track here, but won't quite make it over the top of Claxton. So Colin Claxton from Jeff Cook, third place across the line, taken by Michel Francois of France. <laughs> so well to all the riders in our men's 75 plus scratch race. Colin Claxton, your race winner for New Zealand. Uh, Jeff Cook, second for Great Britain, and Michel Francois in third place for France. So do stay with us upcoming on the victory ceremonies for the men's individual pursuit and the men's scratch race finals.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Men's Individual Pursuit, age category 55 to 59. The medals and a jersey will be presented by Jessica Granbois, the UCI Track Coordinator. In third place, a winner of the bronze medal, representing Australia, Peter Falstead. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Robert Muzio. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion, and winner of the gold medal, representing the United States of America, Brian Haas. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Men's Individual Pursuit, age category 60 to 64. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, Chairman of the World Masters Organising Committee. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing Australia, Gary Mandy. In second place and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Mark Whiffin. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Great Britain, Mike Twelves. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester.
Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Men's Scratch Race, age category 65 to 69. The medals and jersey will be presented by Jessica Grandois, the UCI Track Coordinator. In third place, a winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, Graham Bartley. In second place, winner of the silver medal, representing the United States of America, Lawrence Nolan. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion and winner of the gold medal, representing Australia, Bill Gordon. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships, Men's Scratch Race, age category 70 to 74. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, Chairman of the World Masters Organising Committee. In third place, and winner of the bronze medal, representing France, Christiane Musillet. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Malcolm Freeman. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion, and winner of the gold medal, representing the United States of America, Kent Bostick. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships. Men's Scratch Race, age category 75 plus. The medals and jersey will be presented by Jessica Grandois, the UCI Track Coordinator. In third place, a winner of the bronze medal, representing France, Michel Francois. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing Great Britain, Jeff Cook. In first place, UCI Masters World Champion and winner of the gold medal, representing New Zealand, Colin Claxton. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your applause for our medalists.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships in Manchester. Award ceremony of the 2023 UCI Masters Track World Championships, Men's Scratch Race, age category 80 plus. The medals and jersey will be presented by Ian Emerson, OBE, President of the World Masters Organising Committee. In third place and winner of the bronze medal, representing Great Britain, John Mason. In second place, and winner of the silver medal, representing the Trinidad and Tobago, Earl Henry. In first place, UCI Masters world champion, and winner of the gold medal, representing the United States of America, James Kloss. Ladies and gentlemen, in honour of our new UCI Masters World Champion, we present the National Anthem of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please, one more time, your, around, your applause for our medalists. So that concludes the action here on day three of the UCI World Masters Track Cycling Championships. So congratulations to all of our riders for a great day's racing. We are back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. for the start of the action in day four. Until then, for all of us here at the UCI World Masters Track Cycling Championships, good night.